Hello and let's talk about Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman's stimulus plan. The minister announced the Atmanirbhar pack, Bharat 3.0 package, what is being called as that at least on Thursday. On the one hand, at least there is a plan. After all, the country's economy is in the doldrums. The RBI data shows that the economy shrank in the July-September quarter as well. And it now says that India has entered into a technical recession. At this point, something had to be in the offing. But already experts have noted flaws with Nirmala Sitaraman's plan, including the actual spending being much less than the 2.65 lakh crore that the government has claimed. Now, it's also centred on providing more credit, a model that has not really succeeded in the previous months. So what kind of spending would be needed by the government here? Are such stimulus packages, the kind of packages that Nirmala Sitaraman announced, really the way forward? We talked to Anindya Chakravarti on this issue. Thank you, Anindya, for joining us. So, uh, Nirmala Sitaraman has announced yet another package. There's been a lot of demand, of course, for a stimulus package. We've talked about it, about at least yes. the need for governments to spend in this point of time, and which yeah. they've not been doing. At the same time, this government's record is pretty bad when it comes to actually spending. It's excellent at recycling, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of information coming out on that. So, yeah. first thing, before we go into the uh, much maybe deeper set of questions, your basic take on what she's uh, proposed. So I would say that I think most of them are pretty uh, positive, especially the one where they're targeting specific sectors. Now, uh, you know, uh, this appears to be an import substitution uh, policy being introduced by the government, which is why they've called it Atman Imbhar 3.0. Uh, now, the point is that import substitution, obviously, you know, works with other things working along with them, right? There has to be a welfare several welfare measures in place for import substitution to work because A, prices go up of things. Number two, the quality that you normally receive is likely to be not the same, at least in the initial period. So people have to be protected with other welfare measures. Mm -hmm. uh, the question is whether that has been announced or not. As of now, nothing has been announced for those who actually buy these things. So if you're, uh, let's say there are batteries and uh, I think there has been a direct... Uh, plan to invest or give subsidies and direct subsidies, what they're calling incentive. If they'd given it to the poor, they would have called it subsidy, right? Yeah, it's been called incentive. So essentially, if you increase production by, let's say, 1,000 crore, you're going to get 6% of that, which is 60 crore rupees, the government will give you budgetary support. Now, yeah. that's a, and that's sales, right? So that's a lot of money to get from the government. Of course, there'll be lags and stuff like that, but that's a good amount. Of money and if you look at the sectors specifically that have been identified some of them are mass market sectors like for instance batteries right uh, you'll see that uh, it's a rural consumption of batteries does exist and uh, someone had once told me that there's a deep uh, penetration of chinese batteries in rural areas and right? because there's no electricity that they do right. buy batteries for torches and stuff like right. that so right. There appears to be a plan, finally a plan, if one can say that, right? Till now, everything appeared ad hoc, but one can now say that there is a certain plan that has been put into place. Even, uh, you know, taking care of the entire PF amount of both uh, uh, the employer and the employee is, in, in a sense, an employment incentive. So you hire more people and you don't have to pay the mandatory um, employer's contribution and also the salary, effective salary to the first people, to the employee goes up because they also don't pay their mandatory 12% contribution that they would have otherwise paid. So Absolutely. Uh, you can actually pay 5% less. And even then, the person has a 7% higher take-home salary, right? right. So effectively, right. Uh, that is, again, uh, uh, certain things which are in the right direction. I think that the emergency credit line, all that is, uh, you know, we've had too much of that already. And unless it is on the ground, it is implemented on the ground, it's uh, really beyond a point, it's meaningless. Absolutely. The amount of subsidy, amount of incentive being given, I think is not enough, right? And, uh, but some of the things that have been done, for instance, uh, the slight bit of income tax rebate on housing, buying homes, whether that works out on the ground or not, is difficult to say, but yes, we do know that middle class savings have gone up. People have not gone out of their homes. So right. a lot of conspicuous consumption, which becomes an important part of a middle class family's budget in mm -hmm. this world, especially urban middle class. Um, I would say that that has not taken place. And uh, 
So there is a certain corpus that is developing over the year, which mm -hmm. is which we are not aware of, but it is happening in the bank. Right. right? So uh, maybe there will be suddenly a certain amount of money available. I had uh, pointed to the availability of money because the middle class is not going on holidays, right? And we had worked out that about easily two lakh crore worth of money can be spent by the middle class because they didn't go on holiday. And uh, I suspect that there would be similar things that are happening. For instance, people don't eat out. They don't even order in, right? They're, right. they're worried about ordering in. That is, they're going to bring in the virus. Uh, I'm sure Diwali spending is going to be much less this year than compared to any other. Exactly. Festival spending is going to be much less. So if you go to the, if you take the entire year, then a certain corpus of money exists. So maybe that can be deployed to buying houses or getting EMIs and stuff like that. I don't know that we'll have to see whether that works out. Right. And uh, the amount of money being put in is, uh, again, I don't think it's a lot because you see what is being done is that uh, what the government is doing is it's providing what can be called equity in the mm -hmm. sense that it's like a down payment, right? right? So if in infrastructure, it's saying, okay, we are giving this much money. Now you raise loans on top of that. It is in a sense that 20%, 10% equity, I don't think is enough in uh, given circumstances. The government has to somehow ensure that if they're encouraging private companies, they have to ensure contracts, they have to ensure payments. Right. No one is going to risk it anymore. So mm -hmm. even if you provide equity there, I don't think there'll be enough. What is what uh, in jargon is banking jargon or financial jargon is called leverage. So you get uh, two crore rupees, you uh, leverage it as, as in you get four times as loan, mm -hmm. eight crore rupees, and you can invest. 10 crores, right, right to right. Uh, start a business. Now, uh, I find that uh, very, uh, I mean, not convincing at all. I don't think the credit route is worth uh, going on repeatedly. Right. The amount of money, as you know, is a little shade over one lakh crore. So it's not really significant. Right. In terms. But the direction, I would say, is right. That is finally, there is some sense in what the spending is being done on. Absolutely. Right. Uh, I'm sure there's in the next couple of days, we'll see a lot of commentary on that as well. But yes. I want to go back to one thing which we sort of discussed right before this recording, which was about the nature of the stimulus package itself yeah. and whether a stimulus package is what we need. And it's interesting because I think globally there has been a call for stimulus package. It's been almost one of the universal demands, yes. not even not not necessarily even from the left, even uh, liberal sections, even Absolutely. centrists for that matter. On the other hand, you do think... Known right-wingers. Known exactly. neoliberals have actually asked for stimulus package. Precisely. On the other hand, you do seem to think that a stimulus package right now is maybe not exactly what we need. So why is that? So here's the thing. that If you... Uh, you know, I have also, as you know, uh, been a votary of stimulus packages and I've been a votary of stimulus packages for the last four or five years. Mm -hmm. Saying they spend more, spend more, spend right. more. Right. I think now it's too late. It's too okay. late and not timely. Uh, in a sense, maybe, uh, and my mind has changed only in the last, I would say, one month or so. And the reason I'm saying that is because towards the, I would say, middle of September, end of September, there was a sense that India has crossed the hump of mm -hmm. COVID infections. Right. In many states, it is still true. The number of infections is reducing. But in a lot of states, especially northern states like Delhi, Himachal, Haryana, it's completely exploded. Right. And uh, it, it, this uh, explosion, I don't know what it has, what has caused it. Maybe it is pollution. Maybe it's uh, simply that people have been a little lax during the festival season. Festival season right. But it's a simple thing. Think about uh, a construction site. What do you see? You see people with stones or bricks on the head or the, you know, cement on the head, handing it over to the next person. Right? How do you maintain six feet distance there? Uh, how in strenuous jobs like that, how do you maintain, how do you ask people to keep wearing effective masks, mm -hmm. right? So uh, people do complain. I, I see a lot of, in my area where I live, there are a lot of houses have their own security guards. And I see that many of them complain that standing all day with a mask is not easy, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's a difficult thing to do. And maybe uh, it... Uh, especially if you're doing something strenuous, lifting stuff, you do get choked inside a mask. 
So it's not easy. It will be a, the tendency will be to lower the mask, bring it down. You will see it across the board as people who deliver stuff to your homes. Right. They push up their mask when they're coming near your house because they also are feeling choked by the amount of, you know, the way they're having to wear these masks. They're not exactly. used to it. So for me, I think it is impossible at construction sites to maintain any kind of COVID protocol, whether it is social distancing, whether it is hand washing, whether it is wearing masks, it's not possible, right? Mm -hmm. Given that, what you're likely to see is that these can easily become hotspots. Of course, open air, there is a reduced uh, chance of um, exposure. But we also have to remember that similarly in factories, right? We have to remember that both in construction sites and factories, the level of noise is very high. And we know that uh, when people speak above a certain level, then the amount of sputum or uh, the droplets they're releasing is much higher. Right. So, uh, uh, so in, uh, in COVID, it is universally now uh, acknowledged that when you're singing loudly, when you're talking loudly, chances are you are likely to spread much more at a much higher distance and not six feet, much more than that than you would if you were talking softly. So think of it. So in all these places, these are all COVID potential COVID hotspots, right? And uh, again, if I think of offices, right? Uh, I know you have started going back to uh, your office, but I'm assuming that there's a significant degree of oh, distance. Oh, right? oh, there are just four people in office. <laughs> four people in office, right? Four people in office, and each of you are isolated in different rooms, wearing Absolutely. masks. But there's a point at where you go and fill your tea of uh, cup of tea. Now, you, you will have to, there are four people in office, you can say, okay, I'm going to go in to get my tea. So in the next eight minutes before that, which is what they say, that the droplets are going to be there, and eight minutes after that, please, no one come here. It's right. easy to implement. Right? It's not difficult. Uh, think of an office which has 50 people and one coffee machine. Is it possible to do that? One, two bathrooms, is it possible to do that? I don't think it is possible at all. And there's clear evidence that a lot of offices which had opened up have started shutting down again. Factories, work uh, shops, which were, uh, shop floors which had opened up are shutting down again. So that, therefore, again, let me think of the garment industry in India, right? If you go to uh, even Northeast Delhi, which saw those riots uh, last, uh, late last year and early this year, uh, then you will see, I, I think, uh, sorry, not late last year, early this year. In February. Uh, yeah. So uh, there you will see that there are small rooms, maybe 10 by 10 rooms where there are eight people sitting next to each other. So one person is sewing, uh, is running the sewing machine, handing it to the next person who stitches buttons, right? Puts a collar in, hands to the other person who folds it, hands it to another person who packs it. So there are packers and folders. These are defined jobs in this industry. Right. How do you maintain social distance there? It is impossible to do that, hmm. right? Do we, we know today that this explosion in Delhi has led to a complete absence of uh, ICU beds in Delhi. There are no ICU beds. People with other illnesses are unable to get even hospital beds, right? So given that, I would think that uh, we cannot open up till there is a clear decline in COVID infection. We cannot open up until we have a handle over the how to deal with it. We exactly. cannot open up, right? Given that, uh, all these incentives will come to naught because you can give it, but a factory which starts to produce it will actually not be able to because they'll have to shut down in uh, two days or three days exactly. or five days. Right? Exactly. So therefore, in a situation like this, I don't think incentives will work. We are, we are looking at economic stimulus as if this particular recession, because there's a dis difference between slowdown and recession. You could argue that India was already in recession, as some people have argued, and it was not really slowing down and the GDP growth is all uh, uh, fudged or it doesn't capture the picture. Yes, that's a possibility. But this is a recession not caused organically by lack of demand, lack of production. It's a recession caused by a lockdown. Right. Right. And by the fact that people are not going out to work. And therefore, to my mind, this entire idea of reviving the economy has to be put on the back burner as right now.
Right. But you are definitely not uh, arguing for austerity, I understand. So, no, yeah. not at all. In fact, I'm saying that spend even more. I'm saying mm -hmm. that this spending is meaningless. Mm -hmm. You need to spend 10% of your GDP, right? Borrow, but not for things which will generate more income directly. Okay. You need to speak. You need to take this as a period to create a welfare structure. Right? Use it. Use it as an excuse. Say that okay, there'll be a welfare structure we're investing in. Which then, is, that means, which just to sort of clarify, how would yeah. a welfare structure work? Because I think, especially over the past couple of decades, we almost completely lost that concept of what a Absolutely. welfare structure is. So, exactly. how could how could that be implemented? So uh, you compare, it, uh, and I'm not talking about uh, socialism or left or anything. I'm just saying England. Think about the National Health Service, right? Mm -hmm. It was built over a period of time without any returns after the war. Right? It was a decision taken that we are going to provide uh, free health to people, right. uh, free education across the world, across the developed world, right? Mm -hmm. The right to free education, um, and things have changed now. We are. You see, there is something called obsolescence. If you have an early mover, if you're an early mover, what happens is that you get the later, earliest technology. Now, if you invest, you can get a lot of new technology. You can work uh, digitally in health. I mean, uh, you know, think, uh, uh, I'm, I'm looking at, a, at an example of people in villages, who we call quacks, but people go and get better, right? They have some basic idea of medicine, so they'll say that, okay, you've got this, so maybe this is the issue, right? They provide the first line of health, uh, you know, services, medical services to millions of poor people in India. They do not have degrees. They're all uh, quacks in that sense. There are now many uh, medical apps, startups which are working who can easily go out and organize these people. And uh, they can be called frontline or first line your medical workers, train them over an intensive period online, right? Tell them that there will be centralized uh, doctors who will monitor you online, right? And we will see whatever you're saying, take photographs. It's so easy now. Everyone right. has phones, right? right? Uh, so I'm saying, I'm talking about the health sector. Now let's say that you take uh, workers and uh, people who are COVID, who were COVID positive, who have recovered. Create a database. These are people who can actually work. Use them to build hospitals, clinics, set up a, a network of uh, broadband across the country. That involves spending 6% of your uh, GDP on exactly. health, right? Right, right. Absolutely. All that you've been saying all these years, just spend it. Mm -hmm. right? It means 12 lakh crore rupees in today's terms. It's a huge amount of money and the government... So I'm saying that if you are spending approximately, let's say, 30 lakh crores in your budget, right? Some of it is not being spent because none of these projects are going to take place right. Right? because of the lockdown. Use that existing money, divert it. I do not see, uh, I think that when we look at GDP and all that, that's, that's fair. It's worth looking at. But today we have to look at two things. One is distribution of food to rich and poor, everyone. They should have a basic. If you have money, go and buy more. But you should have universal access to food right. because you can't go to work, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you this has to be. There are so many ways to do it. I mean, right. look at all the restaurants that are sitting idle. The apps which are uh, around, they can work various ways to deliver food to you. There are NGOs who give free food in to village schools, right? There are NGOs which give. Uh, for meals to the poor. So right. you work that out. It's for the government to work out and create these organized things. Yes, you can always uh, be worried about Big Brother watching you and too much centralization and all that. Decentralize it. Give it to state governments. Give it to panchayats. Who's stopping you from doing that? Right. Right? Set a model and say, you will run this. We, are, we have nothing to do with it. Right? Thank Here's you. the money. Right. Right? Uh, we will monitor whether you're spending the money or not. And not we, but state governments will do it. Mm -hmm. State governments will give it to districts. Districts can give it to panchayats and wards, and it can be done. No one is asking you to uh, do it. So, of course, this is all utopian. Why would they do it? So there is always a danger that this can be used to actually even centralize further. Right. 
my point is what is the option available right now i don't think there are options the options are to spend on food universal food access which is cereals proteins milk uh, and that involves large scale government procurement, procurement even if you bring right, it precise yeah right, right food procurement and distribution right mm-hmm. these are the places where you have to invest and these are the places where you create a database of people who will not get infected Right. Look at the districts where there are no infections. Maybe invest, focus on those first. Right. Uh, so I'm saying that the idea of the economy has to be put on the back burner. We have to forget about it, and, and therefore, obviously, you have to say that there can be no interest payments. You don't receive interest, and you don't get rent, and you don't get profit in this particular year. It's like being in the middle of some nuclear holocaust. I don't know what Absolutely. would happen if. <laughs> what, what happened in world war i don't know some people did right. make money but a lot of the regular stuff that you thought economies mm-hmm. were put put set aside these were war economies exactly so right. effectively i'm saying that that is this is an opportunity to build what you do not have mm-hmm. right of course the private sector won't let you do that the private sector does not want you to do that this mm-hmm. is a great time for private health right Precise. they're making huge amounts of money why would they want you to spend Want the sp- state to spend on health, right? But on the other hand, there is the entire private uh, startup ecosystem which would love the state to invest there. Right. So the of course the biggest obstacle here, like I said, maybe was that something of this sort has vanished from the imagination of economists and policymakers Absolutely. for at least three, maybe four decades right now. Yeah. Because yeah. what we're looking at is. The line of thinking, which was there immediately after independence, where the government was seen as uh, the uh, having this function primarily to create infrastructure for the people, a long-term perspective yeah. on development and issues like that, and that has completely vanished in terms of notions of productivity. So that would be the key question: that that even as uh, as a government right now, do we necessarily have the infrastructure? No, no. I, I don't. Th- I don't think we have the infrastructure. It is. Right. It, you have to build that infrastructure. Oh no! I mean, in terms of execution of people, policy, people. In terms no, no. Of I just mean people. Yeah, right. Just people will ability to think like that. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm saying that you know when uh, the plans were implemented. Think about it. Uh, they were not socialist plans. You can, in hindsight, call it socialist. Yes, there was planning. The original model the, was uh, provided by the Bombay plan. By G D Birla, J R D Tata, these are the people, right? What did they say? They said, okay, we need to have in the next fifteen years, everyone clothed, everyone with homes, everyone educated. What do we need for that, right? In fact, when G D Birla died, uh, uh, J R D Tata, who did not get along with G D Birla at all, but he said that uh, he, the praise he gave was that when we sat down to do the Bombay plan, we were wondering where do we start. the bombay plan which was uh, i think 1946 which 46, was like a, yes. which was a kind of a directive or a set of suggestions to the new government that was going to come that how do you proceed with the economy right these are by the top industrialists of india at that time and he said that gd billa got down and said look we just need the basic map today is this is our population this is the rate at which we'll grow oh. so we need so many houses we need so many people educated we need so many clothes Right? We need so much food. Let us say that this is what we need to achieve by in fifteen years. Right? Mm-hmm. Then what is the rate of growth we need, and what does the investment uh, that is required? And it was very. I think in one of these places they said that there is in Bombay Plan itself that we do not believe in the difference between socialism and capitalism kind of thing. So clearly they were also worried that they will be called socialists even then because if you remember the Congress is full of or, or, or alternatively they were worried that. There would be danger with it. Both valid explanations. Yeah, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. But I think that there were also uh, not to forget the Sadar Patel and all those people who were very uh, worried about socialism right, and capitalism, right, 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 right. Communi- communism, and were right. definitely pro-business at that time. Exactly. For their own reasons, I'm not saying that there's right. anything wrong Makes in being that. But uh, uh, so, effectively, this was this is a capitalist idea. There's nothing socialist about it. That's what I'm trying to say. Unfortunately, we have become so new liberal today that we are not even willing to look at that. Absolutely right. So, it, this is definitely an opportunity in terms of large-scale spending, but it does still look like the government's policy will be 
And I think the other key aspect which you also referred to is the fact that there is no real national model or a systemic model in terms of how to combat COVID-19 socially, which means yeah. that what you said mentioned at the beginning, that as time passes, people just get tired and there is, yeah. uh, you know, you just abandon everything. And, so, and also you see that the, oh, okay, it's tapering down. We have now crossed the curve. It's the, it's a downside. So let's start going out. Exactly. Right. right. So there's no social. And then suddenly you see all your friends are getting it. And so exactly. many people are getting it. Your exactly. driver's getting it. So exactly. suddenly the middle class sees that, oh my God, it's come back. So let others start their companies. I'm going to sit because I don't mm -hmm. want to die. So this is this is precisely what uh, exactly. is going to happen. And right, right, right. Uh, of course, if uh, if suddenly by December we see the worldwide COVID has suddenly disappeared, right? There have been such cases of viruses which suddenly disappear and don't come back for years. Like I think even the original SARS, something like that's happened, right? Uh, then obviously you can go back to the old models of Kenjian demand stimulation or uh, trying to stimulate production as well. But as of now, I don't see that happening simply because we have another round of uh, outbreak, not just in India, across the world. Across the world, absolutely. Yeah. The US is going through its third, so yes. it does not yeah. look like it's going to subside anytime soon, unless we get a vaccine and there's a massive immunization effort. Which yeah, is again I'm, interesting because what you suggested also has to do with that. that even exactly. if you want to vaccinate, you need that kind of interest. How will you? Yeah. I mean, if you have to really vaccinate people with uh, what Pfizer is making, then you need a cold chain operation. Like you you would have to, I don't know even if Safal trucks, which deliver your frozen mutter and frozen French fries and corn, whether even they have a minus 80 degree ability right. to transfer it. I don't think they do, mm -hmm. right? Because a normal freezer at best goes to minus 25 degrees at your in your house. Okay. So minus 80 degrees. That's the Pfizer vaccine. That's where right. it'll have to be maintained. I don't think it is even possible in India. Exactly. It's just not possible in India. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. so just to deliver that, think of a, about the infrastructure you have to build on a war footing right now, mm -hmm. just to put refrigerated vans which will right. carry these. That's right. all. Right. Not even anything else. Or provide electricity to a village which will maintain that thing. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm saying that these are easier. Obviously, vaccine is not an op option for most of India unless a new vaccine comes. I think the Russian Sputnik is. Uh, I mean, I think they're saying you can put it in the fridge and stuff. Yeah, there so, are some options. There are some yeah. vaccine options which are relatively much more easier to maintain. Absolutely. Yeah, but as uh, you don't know what will happen after the vaccine. I mean, obviously, one hopes this ends, but there has to be, in my opinion, one has to proceed by saying it's not going to end. So therefore, this kind of stimulus is not the right way to proceed. Absolutely. Right. Thank you so much, Arunjit, for talking to us. Thanks a lot. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back on Monday with more news from the country. Until then, keep watching News Click.